Hey guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge, and today I'm going to be starting a small series about the execute command. And the reason I'm doing this is because first of all I got a lot of requests for some execute tutorials and also it's a really really important thing when you're making data packs because it is a command that basically allows you to do a lot of different things. So some of the stuff that you could do with the execute command is to set conditions that you want your commands to run on. So for example if the block that the command is running on is stone for example. You could also set the targets to run on. So for example, if you only want it to run on players that have a certain entity tag, then you could use the execute command to specify that condition. And you could also change the settings of the run. So for example, change the location, rotation, or dimension of the command that is being run at the end of the execute command. So the execute command is basically super, super important when you're doing anything with different entities or changing the location of a command and you're constantly, constantly using it when you're creating a data pack. So it's really important to be able to know this. So first of all, I'm going to go over the very, very basics of the execute command. Of course, it's an execute command, so type in slash execute, or if you're in a data pack, you don't need the slash, of course. And then once you type in execute, you have all of these different subcommands. Today, I'm just going to be going over as and at because these are two very important uh, subcommands, and they are also sometimes confused if you're somewhat new to execute commands. So I want to go over the differences and show how they interact with each other. And these all uh, affect different things. So align, anchored, as, at, facing, if, in, positioned, rotated, and then finally run is what you use to actually run whatever your command that you're setting the conditions or parameters or whatever for. So the execute as command is used for setting the entity that is running the command. So first of all, I'm just going to set the, I'm just going to show you this example here. So if I just do say hi without any execute command running off of a command block, by default, there is no entity, so it just basically sets it to the command block, which is why it has the little bracket with the at symbol, and then it just says high off of there. So it has the default location of the command block and default entity of the command block. Now if I use the execute as subcommand, and then I do run say hi, so I do execute as at p, which means the nearest player, then I run say hi. What happens is that it executes as me, so it sets me as the new entity for the command, and then it runs say as if I was typing say hi like this. Then it runs it in the same way. Now I'm going to go over to a more involved version. So I just want to show you something really quick. The as command only changes the entity that runs it. It does not take the location of the entity. So I'm going to do execute as the nearest player, which is me run tp at s which means the current entity running the command tp at s three blocks above the current position of the command so it's executing as me and teleporting me three blocks up so where do you think it's going to teleport me so when i press this button you'll notice that i am teleported three blocks above the command block i am not being teleported three blocks up from my position some people get this confused, especially when you're first starting. You might get confused and think, since you're executing as the nearest player, when you teleport three blocks up, you're going to be teleporting the player three blocks above the current position. But remember, it's not changing the current position of the command. It's only changing the entity that is running the command. So it teleports the player, but it teleports based on the command block's location. And something to note really quickly, if you don't know what these are, these little tilde symbols, these mean relative cardinal coordinates, so on x, y, and z axis. So tilde 3 in the center tilde basically means 3 positive on the y axis, which means 3 blocks up in Minecraft. Now let's move on to the at subcommand of the execute command. This changes the position, rotation, and dimension of your execute command to match the entity or entities that you have specified. So, as you can see here, I'm going to have a basic example first that says set block, three blocks up, stone. So when I press this, as you expect with a basic set block command, it's going to set this block up here, stone, because that's one, two, three blocks above the location of the command, which is the command block. So now let's get to an example with execute at. Now what I'm going to do is execute at the nearest player, run set block, three blocks up, stone. This is pretty simple, so it takes the location and it changes the location from the command block's location to the location of the entity it specifies, which is at P or the nearest player. So when I hit it, it's going to set the block to stone three blocks above my location because that's the new location of the command. Pretty simple. 
Now let's go over to this last example. So I'm doing execute as the nearest player at at s run tp at s three blocks up. So what do you think this is going to do? So what this is doing is executing as the nearest player. So now the current entity of the command is set to the nearest player, which is me. And it's going at the position of the current entity of the command. That's what at s is. So since we just set the current entity of the command to be the nearest player, then it will also be at the position of the nearest player. And then I will run the command for teleport the current entity, which has been set to me three blocks above the current position and the current position has been set to also me because of the at section. So when I press this, I'll be teleported three blocks above my location as opposed to earlier with the example, I was teleported three blocks above the command blocks location. So make sure if you're trying to set the location of the command and set the current entity of the command that you're using both as and at. So now that we got the basics of the as and the at subcommands of the execute command nailed down, I'm going to quickly show you some more examples. So let's go down here and I'm going to show you some examples. So first of all, I'm just going to summon these two armor stands just so we could see them uh, interact with each other. So just for um, testing purposes, they all have the entity tag of test, which basically means that I can actually target those armor stands specifically. So let's go to the first command. First, I'm doing execute at the nearest player as the nearest single testing armor stand. You could ignore the actual syntax here. And then I'm running teleport the current entity to our current position. So what do you think is going to happen here? I'm doing execute at the nearest player as the nearest testing armor stand and then teleporting the current entity to the current position. Which armor stand do you think will move and where do you think it'll move? I'm going to press it now. And what you'll notice is that the closest armor stand teleported to my position. That one was pretty simple because all it was doing basically, it was setting the current position of the command to the player's position. And then it was setting the current entity to the nearest armor stand that was for testing. And then it teleported the current entity, which is the armor stand to the current position, which is my position. Now let's go over to the next command. So here's the next command. I'm executing as the nearest player and then at the position of the nearest single testing armor stand. And then I'm going to be running the teleport for the current entity to the current position. What do you think is going to happen this time? So, as you can see, I was teleported to the nearest armor stand. The reason for that is that I'm executing as the nearest player, so the current entity of the command is set to me, and I'm setting the current position of the command to the nearest armor stand, and then I'm running a TP command to teleport the current entity, which is set to me, to the current position, which is set to the nearest armor stand. Now let's go to the last one. I'm doing execute at the nearest player, and then I'm executing as the single nearest armor stand. And then again, I'm going at the furthest armor stand. And then after that, I'm running teleport current entity to the current position. So at nearest player as closest armor stand at farthest armor stand. So when I press it, You'll notice that the closest armor stand teleported to the position of the farthest armor stand. And the reason that this happened is because I executed first at the player and then I am executing as the nearest armor stand and then from the nearest armor stand I'm setting the location to the furthest armor stand and then I'm teleporting the current entity to the current position. And the current entity is the closest armor stand while the current position is the position of the furthest armor stand. I want to quickly show you an example of something you could use the execute as and at subcommands for. So what I have here is a simple command to freeze all husks within a 10 block radius of the player. How it works is it's executing at all players so it sets the command location to all players and then it executes as all of the entities that are of type husk within a 10 block radius. And now with the current entity set 
to the husks, it can run a data merge command for the current entity, which is set to all of those husks in a 10 block radius of a player, and it changes it to no AI 1B in order to freeze them all. So as you can see, if I am down here in the middle of all the husks who are walking around and I activate the command, it will freeze all of the husks within a 10 block radius. Thank you.